So my name is Brittany Kane. Um, I'm the founder of Foreverland Farm Animal Sanctuary. Our mission is to provide a safe and forever home for animals that have been abused, neglected, or slaughter bound, um, and share their, their stories of survival and perseverance to create a more compassionate world. So we have about 100 animals um, currently that call the sanctuary home. Everyone has a very unique story. Um, you know, and a lot of times, like people, when we tell those stories, sometimes it resonates with their own life and that creates, you know, them making changes or them learning about the plight of farm animals um, and then changing some of the things that they do in their daily life so then there aren't more animals that need to be rescued. So there are livestock guardians. Um, I can tell, they yeah. were doing a good job. They take care of, they protect the, this herd. I have been rescuing animals, I would say like, my entire life. But in my late 20s, um, I adopted a horse named Booger. Um, I'd been around horses my whole life. Um, so I, I knew about them when I got older, I wanted to rescue one. And he really started me on this journey of like learning about the plight of not only horses, but other farmed animals. There's a lot of like dog and cat rescues, but I'd never really seen anything for farmed animals. Uh, the first time we were on, um, we had just kicked off our capital campaign to purchase a larger facility. We had grown like exponentially in those first few years. And so this July, we actually purchased that farm um, and we moved all of the animals. And so now we are starting our new journey here at our new farm. And so now we are focused on, you know, building the infrastructure that we need. The majority of it was already here. Um, we've had to tailor some things to the different animals like pigs. Um, not a lot of places have pig fencing and things like that. Um, so now it's about, you know, growing in our community and being able to sustain the sanctuary now that we're, we're in our forever home. A typical day for us is waking up in the morning, uh, making sure everybody's fed, everybody has water, um, everybody did okay overnight. Um, and then we do a lot of cleaning. We clean every single day for multiple hours a day. Um, we have a really great um, team of staff and volunteers that come um, daily to help with those chores. It really is just day in and day out taking care of the animals. Outreach and education is a big part of it because obviously a sanctuary can't take in every single animal. Um, we get calls every single day like asking us to take in some animal as small as a chicken or as big as a horse and the demand far outweighs like the capacity. The hope is that we educate the public about buying mini pigs off of you know, the internet or from a breeder, um, knowing that 96% of pot belly pigs get rehomed within the first year because it's not what people expect. Hi. Hi. Hello. So it's, it's teaching people not to make those choices in the first place if they're not able to do so. And, you know, if, if that is something that you do want to do, then you can adopt a pig because there's there's so many that need homes and it really is about watching them feel safe enough that they know you know i'm i don't have to worry about where my next meal is going to come from i don't have to worry if somebody's going to be you know hurtful to me um they know and they trust us enough and they feel safe in their home and they don't ever have to worry again that's that's the most rewarding part How about that? And in the season of this Giving Tuesday, Cincy Lifestyles, Michaela Hugh Shaw joining us now to talk more about the experience there. Yeah. And just you were saying that each one of these animals has something going on. They do. And that they, they have, need this care. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is going to be their forever home with the name Foreverland Farm. And whether a chicken maybe fell off of the back of a truck during a transport and was left out on the highway, mm -hmm. or if there was an animal that was maybe surrendered in a hoarding situation, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, all of these animals have a story. Right. And they're all so sweet. I mean, you have horses that maybe can't see very well or are blind, but then their they're seeing friends help them out. Um, it, it's kind of just this, this really beautiful community of animals and people who care so deeply about making sure that they still have a really good life too. Yeah, and you, you mentioned some of the stories. Is there one that stood out for you more than the others? You know, I would have to say just 
recognizing that this is a lot more common yeah. than mm -hmm. I would have known prior to visiting the farm. So it really wasn't just one story. It was just the fact that there are so many stories. Yeah. One thing that Brittany said is that they get calls daily for surrenders or people who may people who maybe got in over their head when it came yeah. to um, having an animal. So they end up mm -hmm. getting requests all the time. So. Yeah, it's it's just the fact that this is actually really in need. Um, but those goats are uh, antelope. Yes. <laughs> I, well, that's a good question. Yeah. You have a little bit of everything mixed in here. Ah. There's a pig that hangs out with the goats too. <laughs> um, everybody kind of looks out for each other. It's and then some of this video is like I feel like I'm watching Charlotte's Web. <laughs> like, um, I mean, in what ways? So they also there's an educational aspect to this too, right? For with the community. Sure. Yeah. So really, just um, one thing that she mentioned in the story here: not adopting those cute little teacup pigs that you might see yeah. come across your your Facebook feed or something like that, because they could grow up to be a 200, 300. 600 pound pig. Wow. Um, just educating people about even farm animals and the treatment that they receive. Some of these animals have been sla uh, saved from maybe going to slaughter as well. So uh, oh. Brittany herself, she's vegan and um, that's a big message that she shares as well. Just being mindful of where your food comes from mm -hmm. uh, and also the treatment that those animals may be receiving. Yeah, so this puts the focus on that. It for does. Sure. And I mean, gosh, aren't they just so cute? I had the best day here. Yeah. Like, All right. Every Everybody just so many coming up and course? saying hello. That, yes. yes. <laughs> Some eye You can tell I'm there. a city girl. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what Michelle's like, what animal is this? It's a giant frightening bird walking <laughs> over there. No, um, I somebody, swear they were the sweetest things ever. For well, sure. <laughs> if somebody's watching this, if someone wants to learn more about the farm and, and how they can support mm -hmm. the Foreverland Farm, how can they do that? Yep. All that you have to do is go to foreverlandfarm.org. They also have visitor days, which is really nice. So say you, you feel it in your heart to be able to donate today or to give on this Giving Tuesday, you can go out later on in the spring and meet all of these very sweet, over 100 animals. As now, well. I know that's Aww. a turkey. Yes. yes. That is yes. a ding, turkey. Ding, ding. Gobble, yes. gobble. <laughs> Nice. Well, nice to know there's a place like visit. that too. One day, if you know, when I'm put out to pasture, that could be oh, okay. an option. Oh, okay. Oh, Wags is clapping over there. It's a sympathy <laughs> clap. We'll be right back. Thanks, Michaela. We'll be right back. Of course. <laughs>